Um, Please, uh, can you give an intro as to why this is happening? So, well, I can't can hear you, you sorry. Give an intro as to why this is happening. Oh, this is happening because basically Taylor's come down from, where was it, Newcastle? Newcastle, yeah. Yeah, Taylor's come down from Newcastle, he says he wants to debate a Trinitarian. I mean, <laughs> if he wants this fine. But basically, like, the Trinity is this doctrine, the Trinity is this. Um, we believe in three co-eternal, co-equal persons in the one being of God, right? How we, how, how we find this out is through the Bible. So we just don't read one passage or two passages in the Bible. No, we read it consecutively throughout the Bible. And church fathers came to that conclusion. That's why it was, that's why it was received at Nicaea that this Trinity is a sound doctrine. But before that, people did believe in the Trinity. For example, um, in the Didache, it mentions that we have to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The same formula used in Matthew 28, 19. Right? Also, we have um, St. Justin Martyr mentioning that God, that um, the Son is God and that the Father is God. We also have Clement, uh, uh, Clement of Rome, for example, mentioning that the Son is God. So bef bef even oh, before oh, there is a... Uh, <laughs> it's all right, bro. It's all right. Yeah, so even before we even get to like the Council of Nicaea, there is a, there is a trinity of sorts. is isn't the Nicene Trinity or the Con Nicene Constantinople Trinity, but it is a trinity of sorts. Right? I would argue this. First of all, like, let, do you want to go to the Trinitarian? Because uh, I've got as many verses I could go to now that show that at least God is plural. What, I'm not go what, I, what I can't do is show you a verse where it says God is, is three persons, one being, because that doesn't exist in it. So there isn't a verse that says specifically God is three persons, one being. But there isn't a verse that says specifically God is one person, one being. So is, is, there a, is there a scripture that says Yeshua is Yehovah? Is there, is there a scripture? Not that, I, not that I know of right now. Not that, that, would, that would but, be the being, Yehovah would be the name of the being, which is God. We see in Micah 5 verse 1 to 4, it says, um, talking about Yeshua come from Bethlehem, Ethra, he shepherds in the name of Yehovah, his God. So I could bring up like 10 verses off the top of my head that state it's not his name. Right, but let's go before that, right? For example, it says in Jude, not Jude, sorry, it says, it says in, Let's go to Genesis 126 and then let's move on. Let's go further up for that. So Genesis 126 says, let, God said, let us make man in our image. You find this also in Genesis 11, where, where God says, let us go down to them. And he's, he's talking about the Babylonians, not Babylonians, sorry. They, they basically they built a tower up, that's the Babylonians. Why is my brain gone? <laughs> that's the Babylonians, they built a tower up to heaven. And they basically said, let us go down. There's, there's instances within the Old Testament of plurality. Also, we read in Genesis 3, 8, right, that the, the sounds or the voice of the Lord God was walking in the garden. Now, um, it's here walking, it's here moving, but yeah. It's, it's, well, it says walking from what I've read. Different translations. So. Right. But well, if, if, if you want, I've got an interlinear in my phone, we can go yeah, through that. You, you, can go, you can go to it, but you went to Genesis 1.26. Yeah, Genesis 1.26. But Genesis 1.26, all you've got there is God speaking to someone, not that the God but is if, if God's going to speak to someone in plural, remember, this is before there was a royal we, so we can't use the argument that there was a royal we. This was centuries before there was a royal we, right? God is saying, let us make man in our image, and then he himself is making him an image. Now, it doesn't make sense that God, unless he's contradicted himself, decides to say, let us make man in our image, then he makes them himself. No, he's speaking to persons within his God. It only makes sense in that concept. But even if you read before that, Genesis 1, for example, where it says, in the beginning, Elohim made them. Well, Elohim is a plural word. We can't deny that. And it is spoken of angels, but it is still a plural word. <laughs> I don't want to speak over you, so <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying like, there are instances in the Bible where we see plurality and not, not, not in a sense. I mean, you could argue the verse, the very next verse says, and then he made him, fine. But we believe that in the one being, the one being of God is a he. We don't, we don't deny that. I would say Genesis 1.26 <clears throat> is prophetic of Yeshua in the new um, creation. So God is um, stating about the new creation from the death through Yeshua and through his blood. But there's other arguments, even if you negate the fact of the, um, the royal way argument, you could easily say it could be the angels, the royal council. It could be God as he's forming man from the dust and he breathes into him breath you've got two parts you've got the earth physical and breath of life in him but so that, that kind of makes no sense because if you're going to say that it is the breath of life or is the mud himself then what you're doing is you're essentially saying that the mud and the, and the breath are equal to god i remember like the, the, the very next chapter genesis 2 says that the spirit of god is the breath of god right that's what it says he breathed into adam the spirit of god <laughs> right so and and the, the the idea that it's an angels that's a michael heiser view have you heard of michael heiser 
Right, Michael Hines is Trinitarian, but he believes that the verse is talking about a council of angels. Right? The problem with it being a council of angels is what God says. God does not attribute his own, his own self to somebody else. He wouldn't just say, oh, you are me, and I am you. Remember that the, the divine name, the Tetragrammaton, is only used for somebody who's divine. So I, let me finish, let me know I'm playing it. So I, as it stands, I don't see that verse claiming that those, those are angels, rather I see it claiming that there's an us. And that us is the one being a God. It only makes sense because God does not provide his own divinity for other people to take on. So the, <clears throat> the us isn't saying that the us is God. You're saying that we wouldn't equate um, for the earth as being God. I never said that the earth is. I'm not even saying the earth is like a person. No, no, let me stop you there. I, I said he wouldn't equate his own self to the earth. You see where I'm coming from? But he's not equating the earth. It's no, but, no but, but from your example, you're basically claiming that because because when he when he said, let us make man in our image, he's basically speaking to the earth, the ground, and he's speaking to the breath of life. But that makes no sense because he wouldn't equate himself to what he has created. No, it makes sense because Yeshua is created through in the new creation, but he's not God. It, right. um, the earth is being created through a body, not that the earth Well, let's is... not skip. I, I don't believe that Yeshua is created, by the way. We can go through that, but let's not skip. We're going a bit too far. First of all, I want you to establish that verse. Does it say, let us make man in our image? Yeah, it does. Right. Does the very next verse say, then he made them in, our, in, in yeah. his image? Right. So whose image is it referring to? The Father. Because it's only the Father that's God. How many you, you've, you've assumed as the Father, but it doesn't so, say the Father. So how many persons is he? I believe that he is the full being of God. So it's referring to the Godhead. So the... the the he is three persons, even though the he is the third person comes in. Well, he could be a singular. You could use he as a singular, or you could use he as. I think the Bible uses he as a plural to refer to the being of God. Because as I've said before, it would be very contradictory for God to claim, let us make man our image, unless he's speaking to him to himself, who is one person. But that doesn't make any sense because why would he say let us? He's, remember, he's not he's not from Newcastle, so he's not going to say let us do this. No, he's he's going to be saying let us make man our because he's talking about plurality. One minute, bro, one minute. He's going to, he's, yeah, yeah, God bless me. He's, he's he's saying let us make man our image because he's talking about himself. And I believe in the bond being of God, he can refer to himself as he while still being simultaneously three persons with us. So. <clears throat> when a paint a paint um, picture and he says, "What will we make to do?" To paint an uh, image through the paint or on a um, picture doesn't mean that the pictures uh, or the papers are living um, thing. It's just a form of speech. What will we do today? And for him to say, "Let us do that," and then it's him who's doing the creating. No, now we've already uh, uh, let's assume that that us is God. Why is it not then they made man in their image rather than? He made man in his but you, you could reverse that and say, why didn't he say that? Why didn't God say let? Why, why didn't God say I will make man in my image? Why didn't he say that? If you're going to reverse that, the problem with, with trying to reverse it is that there's still the problem of the, the the us distinction and the him distinction, right? We still have that, and as I've said before, there is plurality within the one being of God. God can refer to himself as him while still still being simultaneous to us, as I've said before. The verse itself describes an us and then describes a him. Now, you can't argue that, that that us is separate from him. It has to be connected to him because God wouldn't relate to creation. So it has to be an uncreated us. Where does it say that he wouldn't do that? Including no, no he, he wouldn't use the word us in reference to himself, in reference to creation. Two parts, physical from the dust, spiritual from the breath of God. But the problem is that doesn't say that in the verse. It does in Genesis 2 verse 7, it says, and God formed a man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into the um, body, into the nostrils, the breath of life. Oh, so you're talking about the action. Basically the action of him breathing the breath of life. The breath of life is the spirit of God. Yeah. Well, as it says in um, Job, I think it's 66. No, it's not Job 66. Job 33, 4. Well, it says in Job, Job 33, 4, the spirit of God has given me life. Sorry. <laughs> The Spirit of God has given me life and the breath of um, God has formed So but basically, like, if the Spirit of God can give life, then obviously we can refer to that as the Spirit of God giving life. That doesn't necessarily, that, 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 that doesn't necessarily mean that, that the Spirit of God is created. Because as I've said before, Genesis says there's an, there's an Elohim, there's a plural. And also Genesis 126 still says there's an us, which you haven't addressed before. But the thing is, Elohim is a plural word, so is Panim. Panim means face or faces, depending on the context. There are plural um, words that clearly um, can be plural in sense, but in their usage, it's singular. So is, is Moses, who was made Elohim to Pharaoh, is he three or two or four people? Well, as I said before, there are different instances of Elohim. 
Yeah, so, that, like, so, so in a sense, there were different, there were different entities of Elohim, but that, that still doesn't negate my point, because just as it uses the term Elohim for one person, it can be used, essentially, for, for multiple persons. For example, angels are called Elohim. Well, the Bible states that there's only one God, the Father, from whom all things came, and through, and then it says, and one Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. through who we are made, talking about the new creation, because Jesus was made both Lord and Christ. He didn't pre-exist as Lord, he was made Lord and So Christ. when Jesus says that, because we're going to have to go skip past Genesis 1 to So when Jesus says that in um, I think it's J um, John 17, 24, I think, when he says, Father, let us have the love that we had before the world began, who, who's he talking about? What is he talking about? Let's make man before. Oh, you're talking no, let about us have John the love. verse 5. Um, no, I'm talking about what? Well, I'm talking about one John. No, John 17, 24. So that's the love I had before you before. The world began. Yeah. yeah so there's um, the same statement in um, tw um, verse 5, and then he gives us that same glory in 22. So it's talking about um, God's foreknowledge. But hold on. Again, like you're skipping the, the, the context because, again, just because he gives us that same glory doesn't mean we're related to that glory and that love they had before the world began. Remember, he says love. He's, I'm talking about Genesis right, 17 yeah. 24. He says love. He doesn't say glory. Right. So if he's saying love, who's he talking about? He's not talking about pre pre existing man. Because if you read the context, what does it say in earlier in Genesis? Uh, no, in John 17. It says that, um, but this is before J John 73, by the way. It says that John basically, uh, no, John conveys it as this, right? Jesus is that same God that can give eternal life. That's earlier in John. I'll have to gear up. So but Hebrews 5 verse 79 <clears throat> states that he was made the source of eternal Let, life. Let's, not, let's not jump to Hebrews because the problem is with jumping to Hebrews is we're missing the context of the Gospels. Would you agree that the Gospels were written before Hebrews? I don't know what happened the, um, the Well, I, I would say this. I would say that there is, uh, there is at least more attestation for the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels being written beforehand. Ugh. There is more, there's more, um, there's more evidence for the, the, the Synoptic Gospels being written beforehand than written after the letters of Paul. So what you're doing is you're basically reading theology from the, the letters of Hebrews into Paul. Well, I'm not doing that. So you want me to use the disciples stuff, John, John, John 17 verse um, 1 to 3 with the um, you are alone the true God when you look into the makeup of the Greek it states you might want to watch the camera that's coming this way oh yeah um. yeah this is ridiculous uh, it's, it's always this long just in your camera yeah oh man what the hell Idiot, idiot, idiot. You see who the instigators are, just them. <laughs> and they want to hit him with a knife. They got a knife? They got a knife, yeah. Oh, man. That, uh, that man had a knife. We, we might have to move. I don't know where JC is, though. Because um, I really want to have a conversation, but we need to go with like. Well, I feel like we got 15 minutes anyway, so if you want to move, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's alright, sister. I'll just. Let's just, um, uh, look, can you check the thing? Because I, d I can't see it from it. Just check whether it's filming both of us. Yeah, all right, all right. Basically, John, John 17, 3. So your, your argument was that John 17, 3 is talking about um, so God when himself. You, when you look but, at the makeup of the word monon, which means alone, it, 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 you go to point one down in the word, and it says, it is an adjective alone without a companion. Then in sub point P, which is talking about um, John 17, 3, it states that it is also joined to its nouns and other verbs also, so that what is predicated may apply to one person alone. It can't be anyone else but the but Father. The, the problem with stating that is what Jesus says here. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son. So you can, you can agree that it's Jesus speaking here, right? Yeah. Nobody else. Right. So, Father, the Son has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. The property of giving eternal life is only for God alone. That's a fact. That, that is a fact. Gives, if God gives Jesus the ability... God he doesn't say he gave him the ability. He says you give him authority. Yeah, authority is not ability. If I give you, if I give you the authority to go and plant a seed in that in that um, grass bit there, that doesn't mean you don't have the ability to do it. Well, 
if you give me the authority to plant a seed in your garden, I'm allowed to do it. But yes. if, if you don't give me authority, I can't. Otherwise, then there'll be legal consequences. So No, but you will still have the ability to do it. Just because I haven't given you authority, you still would have the ability to do it. Remember, Jesus in his pre-incarnate pre state, as it says in Philippians 2, 6 to 11, he made himself lower than the angels. So in a sense, he would be subordinate to the Father in that sense because he's made himself lower than the angels. And the Father's above the angels, obviously. But you wouldn't say that he is the alone true God. You wouldn't say it. Predicating but, that of the Father as the alone true God. But hold on, hold on. The, the, the thing is, the Kai is used. If you, if you look in Greek, there's a connective Kai. It, it connects two verses. And what it says here, let's read it. And this is life eternal, that they might know indeed the only true God and Jesus Christ. Yeah. The problem is there's a connective there. The connective connects the two nouns, the two parties connected. Yeah. Why would the two parties be connected if the Father alone is true God? And we're not denying that the Father is true God. That's not a denial for us. It's, it's, the, it's the tying of believing. So we've got the belief that the Father is alone the true God and that Jesus is the Christ that the you, the Father, sent. So you have to believe both that the Father is God and that Jesus is the Christ. That is eternal life. If you don't believe in um, the Son, you don't have the Father. So I, I would say that's a problem because the text is not conveying that. Remember, as, as I said, Jesus is speaking plainly here. Yeah. He's not. He's not mentioning any of what you just said. There. He's speaking plainly. He's saying that, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ Himself. He's Christ whom thou hast sent. The problem is he's making the connection with the Greek word Kai. If you look in the Greek word that Ant used there is Kai. Yeah. The connection is still made between the true God and him. Yeah. Why would he do that if he's talking about a, if he's a pre-existent plan of God that is created that has no right saying the things that he said? Well, because it states, Father thou hast come, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you, for you granted him authority over all mankind, that he may give eternal life to those who have given him. Now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus and, is the Christ. So the and is still there, the Christ yeah, is still there. Yeah, the and is there. So what eternal life is to know that the Father is alone the true God, and Jesus is the Messiah that he It doesn't say Jesus is Messiah, though. It it's doesn't say that. That's literally the... Yeah, I, I know Jesus Christ is Je Jesus Messiah, but that's not the pedigree. Remember, the Christ is connected in the two parties. Yeah. That you alone are the true God and Jesus Christ in the sin. And as I said before, it says that, that the, the Father has given the authority. That doesn't mean he's given him, him the ability. He still he had the ability within himself. But like for example, in John in John two, I think it is, Jesus says, and this is this is a, this is a concept that you really have to get behind if you really want to understand the truth, right? In John two, Jesus says that he knows the hearts of all men. The problem with knowing the hearts of all men is that only God alone knows the hearts of all men in Jeremiah seventeen ten. So what Jesus is doing, he's equating to himself. An attribute only God has, and only God has omnipotence because God is God. But Jesus can do it if God's in him, Acts 2 verse 22. It says that, um, Hero is your... Okay, so you've gone beyond God's... Because remember, what, what I'm doing is I'm going before. I'm intentionally going before the Gospels and in between the Gospels. So the Gospels, the folks I went to uh, Hebrews, who went through, like, the, the Gospels came beforehand. So I went to the Gospels and we, in Acts 2 verse 22, it says Jesus is a man... Acts is not a Gospel. Remember, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is the four Gospels. You know so we're just thinking only the Gospels. No, no, I didn't say only Gospels. I said the Gospels are before it. Because remember, you can't read the context of what is after into what is before. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But then we're going to end up going, so we're going to end up taking, wasting time going through the book of Hebrews, going through the book of Acts to show you that Jesus Christ is... Sticking to just the Gospels then, Mark 12, verse 28 to 34, it states um, the scribe talking to um, Jesus after he's just been debating, says that, um, what is the greatest two commandments? And Jesus says to him, to love the, um, actually, here Israel, Jehovah is our God. Yeah, he calls the Shema. One, and that to love the Sorry, Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Then he goes on to say, to love your neighbor as yourself. These yeah. are the greatest two commandments. Then the scribe responds that you were truly stated that, that he is one and there is no other beside him. Right. And to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind. And then he quotes the um, second greatest commandment, but for time, he said, Jesus states, um, it states that Jesus saw he answered intelligently. So unless that was a lie, and therefore Jesus thinks um, lies are intelligent, what he said has to be true. You're confusing the subject, because remember, the, the subject was that no, if you do not love the Lord your God, will you harm yeah, so, so it's just to love your Lord your God. Yeah. 
Right. So, what I'm saying is, so the predicate is to love your God. Yeah, so yeah. why would Jesus lie about that? So the that? reason I went to that part is what, he's, what the scribe's saying is true. It can't be a lie because Jesus saw that was intended. But that doesn't negate. You're not going to you know, you know hear so, what I'm saying, but that doesn't negate Jesus being God just because he no, says to love your God. Go on, go on, go on. So, when the man said, and we see Jesus seeing the Shema, Yahweh Israel, Jehovah is our God, Jehovah is one, which includes him. Jesus is not the God of himself, otherwise we have to worship himself. So who is the he that is one according to the scribe? As I've said before, the, the, according to the scribe, the, the Lord God there would be would be the Father. Because as I said before, Philippians 2, 6, 11 says that Jesus made himself lower in the angels. That doesn't mean he didn't have deity within himself, but that means he's made himself in lower in the angels. So he has a God. That's why it says in John 20, 17, I go to my God, your God, my Father, your Father. So, so understand this, that God in, in his human nature, in his incarnate nature, is subservient to the Father. But after that, when he receives his glory, he's no longer a part of that. That's why, that's why he says in Matthew 28, 19, all right, I have been given all authority over heaven and earth. Well, who has authority over heaven and earth? Jesus is given it. God has it to give. Right, but why is he giving it to him? Why well, has it? One minute, one minute, bro. One minute, bro. Why does he give it to him? Because he's the king over the kingdom of God. No, he gives it to him because prior to that, he was incarnate. He was on earth and he made himself Lord and No, he was given it because he obeyed to um, obedience, made perfect in Hebrews um, 7. Up to his death, he wasn't perfect. He was perfected. It was on his death that they could see that he was perfect. But the problem with that, if you're, if you're going to run to Hebrews 7, you know, the problem is you have to deal with what it says in Hebrews 1. Hebrews 5, it states that... Um, he was made, he was made the eternal source of, I can't even remember off the top of my head. Yeah, um, in, in lieu of his, reincar his incarnation. Yeah, remember, so God is incarnate, as, Gen as John 1, 1, 1 to 3 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, was God, and the Word came flesh and dwelt among us, as it says in John 1, 14. That's your, that's your opinion on that, John 1, I'm not even reading, opi I'm not saying an opinion, saying but no, you're not listening to me, because I'm not saying an opinion, I'm saying, I'm, I'm reading what the text says. Yeah, but you're, you're, telling assuming, me you're assuming that the Word there is Jesus. Um, well, yes, because the context implies that, does it? Yes, it does. No, Do you want, you want to, let, let's it, go through it then. Let's go through it. Go to Geneva Bible, it says the word is an it. Um, that's irrelevant. Bible. You could use the word, the term, as an it, fine. But that doesn't negate what I'm saying because the word is specifically a man. Look, look as it says here. Yeah? It becomes flesh. Comes flesh, right. We don't have a problem with the word becoming flesh because the word of God is flesh. But let, let's read on, right? The, and the light shining in the darkness and darkness was compared. Was, actually, let's go before that. This is, this is verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we see within Jesus Christ, nothing was made without him. Right, let's continue, right? And the light shined over the darkness, and the darkness comprehended if it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came to a witness to bear witness to the light. So who's John bearing witness to? God. Yeah, but, but who specifically? That light, oh, that no, light mentions the word. You're not hearing what I'm saying, are you? No, the light is in. Uh, but you're not hearing what I'm saying. Who's he bearing witness to? The to light, the, the so light the that come down. Who was the light? Look, let's, let's, let's go for it again. God the Father. And the light, in him was the life, yeah. and the life was the light for men. Who so was it in? So let's assume that the him is um, Jesus. Yes, sir. In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. Who was in name Jesus? John 14 verse 10, the Father dwells in me. You've gone past this verse to John 14. I'm trying to get you to stick one to us first, Tate. I'm sure in context. The co the dude, the, let, let's, do, let, let's do this properly, right? If you read context in books, yeah, do you start? Do you read the context from the beginning of the chapter or do you go all the way to the end of the chapter? Because well, you went to John 14. Well, considering that it says the word is in it, and in that word is um, yeah. life. Even if I grant you that the word is in it, that, this, that doesn't preclude this, because as I've said before, it says in him was life, and I'm just reading out to you. Yeah, in, in, in him was life, and the light is the light of men, and the light shining in the darkness, and the darkness compared to not. Now, you, if you want to say it's, it's, an, it's an it, not him, this is where you're debunked, because it says here, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light to that woman. Bro, 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 one minute, one minute, because I've got a camera there, bro. Oh, uh, it's all right, it's all right. Um, that, that was a light, that was a true light, which light of every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew what. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Who gave, who gave power to become the sons of God, according to the Bible? No, but Jesus Christ gave him power, didn't he? Right there it says they didn't know him, but yet in John 1, 18, the same chapter, it says, the son made the father known because they didn't know him, so that's not about the father. John 1, 18, no, 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 you know what I'm saying? So like, John 1, 14, John 1, 10 says this, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, yeah. and the world was, 
the road knew him not. So he was in the road. Bro, 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 one minute, one minute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've literally got like three minutes. Sorry, sorry, just to All right, I'll just quickly end it here, right? So basically, what it says here is that he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So it's obvious that this this being or this word was in the world. And as you mentioned, as it's mentioned before, I didn't read it, I only read it to you, right? The word was with God and the word was God. The word is clearly God. There's no there's, there's no lie about that. If you look at the inter so, sorry, bro, bro, bro. If you look at the inner linear, yeah. um, the word was God. That's how God was the word in the inner linear. It's not the same. Yeah, it, it can be it can be used to reverse, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, if you look at the Greek the Greek syntax, words can be used in reverse. Sentences in reverse. Like I could say the John was this, but the noun is still the same. So it can either say the John or John the. Yeah, it can. Could do that's basic Greek syntax, but that's not how it um, reads. It's saying God is his that, like, but I am my you're telling me that's how it reads. I'm telling you, look, in Greek syntax, you can reverse words, you but can, it still but means the same thing. You can, but if I say I am my speech, my speech is upon me, it's not different. It is me. First, uh, so are, are you acquainting God with your speech? Then, or is that what you're telling me? I'm acquainting God since He made me in His, in his image and likeness that I would be exactly like He is. So, you're saying that God is basically a man, a human man sitting on a throne. Is that God what you're telling me? Change. So yeah, God doesn't change, right? But you're telling me that the being of God, right? let, let me finish. Are you saying to me that the being of God, remember I'm saying the being of God, I'm not saying Jesus, but the being of God, you're saying that the being of God is a man. What do you mean by man? There's two words. Because you're equated us being the word of, no, you're equating us being an image of God with, with us being the same image of God. That's what you're equating. So, no, we men are made in his image. Yeah. So we're in his image, in his likeness. So what is that image? The fact that we are one um, person. We're not one person. We're what we are. The person itself is the best. Um, no, we, we have a diverse of people. We're not one person. If God has made us in his image, we're not one person. I'm a different person than you. But every human being is not um, one human. Many human beings are not one human being. Right, right. But that, that proves my point. It doesn't prove yours. Because, no, no, because if there's one being, we're, we're one being, you're, you're human, I'm human. Yeah. Then it, it, doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that God can be one, one being in three persons. No, Again, you just, you just prove my point. No, we're human beings. That's plural. You see if God is one being made up of Yeah, one persons. being. Right, but human beings are referring to plural, referring to who we are as a collective. That doesn't mean we're different beings. You're not less human than I am. I'm not the same human you are, though. You're not the same human, but you're not less so human. So we're different human beings? You're not the same personality as me, but you, you are the same makeup as I am. Yes. Yes. But we're not the same human being. I'm a different human being. You're, you're not are. a different being to me. That's my point. Thanks for chipping in. <laughs> yeah, you're not a different being to me. My point is we have yeah. this, we share the same being, yeah. but we no. are a different person. No. We, we are human beings, plural. So you're a human being, I'm a human being. We're only being. human beings in, in, in reference to the collective of what we are. That doesn't mean we're different beings. We're still the same being. I disagree, but I literally have to go to the crap. But, um, oh, well, anyway, you can wrap up if you want. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you wrap up for a bit. Um, just wrap up. Do you want to put this on? Uh, yeah, yeah, just hold it. Wrap um, so um, we had a good chat on there. There were some verses that I brought up that explicitly prove that um, Yehovah is the father, according to the scribe. Jesus said what he said is intelligent, so it couldn't be a lie. So the scribe said he is one in relation to Jesus is um, the Shema. Here Israel, Yehovah is our God, Yehovah is one. So if that's the father, here Israel, Yehovah, the father, he is one. It's not, so it can't be the father, son and Holy Spirit as that one Yehovah God. Um, subscribe to Stand On Scripture. Good. <laughs> All right, God bless you, man. God bless you. When are you next back? Um, well, this is the only chat I've actually had, so... We want it all! I'll probably, if I do, we I might be next month. Oh, fair enough. Because the cost of it is it's 8 p.m. just for you to get down and have one chat, so... Well, God bless anyway. I hope Bob can speak to you as well. Well, I want you to have to debate on... Uh, well, he said yes on once it will be to go back to um, February 24th and 27. It's a right picture where we're having a chat. I actually accepted the um for like three hours after studying. Yeah. It made sense to us at that time, but then you were supposed to know. And he anyway, went, at a different time we'll talk on it long. It's been three years, three months. So well, hopefully you could you lock us to that out anyway, man. But God bless anyway, man. What, what, I, what I think um, a little bit weird is that he calls me many of you oh, the devil. videos debunking. But yet he chased Ali Dawa all the way down there. He goes up and says, it's hypocritical, but I mean that's you that's between you and Bob. Let me let me finish. Wait, don't turn it off, let me finish. Because I have to wrap up basically. 
Oh, hey, oh, oh, yeah, no worries, man. God bless. <laughs> So basically, the, the idea of Unitarianism is, full, is a false doctrine. Ultimately, because if you read the Bible in context, it doesn't imply Unitarianism. As I've stated before, Genesis 126, from the very first book of the Bible, we can see a clear priority of God. That wasn't addressed. What, the arguments that were made, in fact, were very dodgy. The, one, the argument that was an angels doesn't make sense when we, when we apply the next verse, which says he made him in his image. God made man in his image. That makes more sense. Right, but if that God is the angels, then what we have is a problem. We have angels be acquainted to God, which doesn't make any sense theologically and biblically, unless you're talking about the angel of the Lord. I actually wanted to get more into like, the angel of the Lord uh, appearances in the Old Testament. For example, um, in, uh, no, not Isaiah, in Exodus 3.14, it literally says that the angel of God was in a bush. Right? If, you read, if you read before that, the angel of God was in a bush and he spoke to Moses. That angel of God is called God. Literally, he's given a, he he's given a Hebrew name for God or the literal church of government. Sure. As for the verses in John, right? John 1 clearly claims that there is this there is this word that is with God and it was God, right? If you read the context, right, the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Then the one who's witnessing to that lie, as it mentions later on in the passage in, in the chapter, the one who's witnessing that, that lie is John. And John is obviously referring back to uh, John, the being of John, or what John is fulfilling, is Isaiah 40 verse 3. Right? Isaiah 44, 40 verse 3, it says the Lord, the, a messenger of the Lord will go before him to make way, to make ways pass for him, basically. Okay, so uh, as it stands, we've not heard any argument against them. We've not heard any argument against my passage, the, the passages I'm quoting. John, John 17 does not claim that the Father is the only God. That doesn't say that at all. Nowhere in the Bible to say the Father is the only God. In fact, it says that the Father and the Son, the connective used there is the Kai. In Greek, there's a Kai, a connective between the two, the two nouns, or, or the two persons mentioned. It's only obvious then that these individuals are in themselves God. And, and you've got to think of it in Hebrew terms. You've got to look at the Old Testament, right? Unitarians, look at the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, people did not use the same divine, the divine, the same divine names to refer to, to a man as with God. That never happens. Unfortunately, this, this hasn't been addressed by any Unitarian. And I, I would have gone through a lot of passages. For example, Isaiah 44 verse 6 says that the Lord God and his Redeemer, speaking at the same time, are the Lord of hosts. We could have got more into that, but unfortunately Taylor didn't have the time to do that. But it, this is why um, Unitarian is a false doctrine. And I, don't, I don't believe anybody can defend it scripturally. If you can, then you can come down and maybe, but I don't think you can. Oh yeah, as, as, as just, just long, one last thing, as for Hebrews 1, yes, 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 I'm hurrying up. As for Hebrews 3.3, 3, right? Hebrews 3.3 3 says that Jesus, is, no, Moses is to Jesus, no, Jesus is to Moses, sorry, as the builder is to his house. It's obvious then that Paul is referring to great, a created being as Jesus Christ himself. And if you read it, it makes sense. Why would, G, why would Paul equate Jesus as, uh, as the builder of a house as to, to Moses as that house. If he wasn't referring to Jesus Christ as that creator, it only makes sense in context when you look at the Bible scripture. But there's a lot of points that I could have gone through, but don't have time because Jason's good. <laughs> well done, blood fire! Well done, blood fire! Cut!